January 2020 is almost over. But hey, we don't need the first of the month or the year to make some real changes. So let's get into how to incorporate Dean into your goals right away. No matter what goal setting technique you use, smart goals, hard goals, law of attraction, etc, etc. And no matter what goals you set for yourself, number one thing to do is to make your intention to achieve the goal for Allah directly or indirectly. So how you can do this is, for example, if you want to be successful and famous, <gasps> Astaghfirullah, how can you wish for something like this? Just kidding. If your goal, for example, is to be successful and famous, you can connect this goal to Allah by saying that if I become successful and famous, I'll have a lot of money and I can help a lot of people with that and Allah will reward me for that, inshallah. If I'm famous, I can use my position to influence, to bring a positive impact into the world and Allah will be happy with me for doing this. Let's do one more example together. I want to be fit, more active and to make healthier choices this year. You can connect this goal to Allah by reminding yourself that your body is an amana or amanat in Urdu, basically something that Allah has trusted you with. So you can say to yourself that because your body is something that Allah has trusted you with, it is your responsibility to take care of it and keep it healthy. And your goal is about doing just that. So even when you're sore from that workout or you want to eat that big slice of cake or pizza, at the back of your mind, you can still tell yourself that do it for Allah, do it for Allah. And you are convinced that there is a reward waiting for your efforts, either here with a fit body and even in the hereafter. A good thing about this is that because your end intention is for Allah, you have this motivation already, which will keep you going no matter what. Instead of the typical or usual reason, which is that people set goals to achieve just because others are doing it or to impress someone else. So this leads me on to my second point, which is don't compare yourself and your progress to others because you are exactly where Allah wants you to be. So don't run for that job because others have it. Don't get married because others are getting married. Don't put yourself down that you're still in college just because others have graduated. But do it because you want to do it and not because the society tells you to do it. Also, your progress will be different to others' progress in the same goal. Don't let their success get in your way and put you down. So keep yourself focused and only look at others for inspiration. The next point is to make sure your goal goals are halal. If you're unable to link your goal to Allah in any way, then maybe you gotta reconsider the goal. For example, if my goal is to get 1 million likes on a TikTok dance video, then what am I doing? I don't see any way to connect that goal to Allah unless maybe I'm making a video that showcases the beauty of the nature that Allah has created or I'm helping people by sharing some tips, etc, etc on TikTok or any other platform for that matter. We can use the available technology to our advantage rather than to our disadvantage. Number four is to incorporate Dean into your actions. So for every goal, you would and you should have a plan of attack, i.e. an action plan that you'll use to achieve your goal, right? Try to see which aspects of those actions can be made more rewarding and beneficial. So for example, for the goal of a fit body, you would go to the gym, yeah? So you could go to a men's only gym or a women's only gym, or you could see how you can be more modest during your workout, or you can plan to listen to nasheeds while you work out rather than music. There are many ways you can do this. Have you started thinking which action you're gonna incorporate Dean into, share it with us in the comments down below so we can help each other out. Now, the action plan I mentioned from the previous point is important from an Islamic perspective because of the hadith, by the way, which is my favorite one, where the Prophet ﷺ says that we should tie our camels and then put our trust in Allah. So having an action plan for your goals is in a way preparing yourself to achieve that goal. Tying your camel would also mean that now you have to follow that action plan and put in your best effort. So many of us don't achieve something sometimes and then say that maybe Allah did not want it for us. But did you tie your camel? Did you put the effort you needed to? This action plan should be a breakdown of the steps you will take to achieve your goal. It'll act like a checklist as well. By doing this, you are involving Allah into your path of achieving your goal by trusting Him, which is a good deed in itself. You are tying your camel, aka you are planning and working hard, which is again a way of following the hadith mentioned before. Then if for any reason you don't achieve the goal, you are sure you did your best and it probably wasn't meant for you. Just don't let the camel free and lose and expect it to not get lost. Point five, believe in yourself and your ability to achieve your goals. I say this because this would be another way of following the Prophet who believed in his destiny, had visions of his success, and he knew he was going to succeed. Of course, he also did persevere and did the work and worked hard for his goal, and you should too. But it all starts with believing in yourself and that you can do it no matter what comes your way. The next point is duas. When you set a goal for yourself, it is something that you really, really want, yeah? 
So let's make sure to include our goals in our duas too and ask Allah to help us achieve them and to get through all the barriers we might face on our path to success. And keep making dua. Allah can say be and it will be. Nothing is impossible for him. There are particular times when dua is easily accepted, such as during rain, after azan, during sujood, etc. Let's not forget the hajjud. If you really, really, really want something, then tahajjud it is. The tahajjud prayer time is when Allah is the nearest and it is also the most soulful moment when everyone's asleep and you're up talking to your Rabb, your Lord, about your dreams and goals. <sighs> so yep, tahajjud and du'as is another way to incorporate deen into your goals. Most of us just wish for something and don't put the work into it. So that's why this time let's put in the work, effort and also include it in our du'as. Oh, what am I waiting for? I'm waiting for you to smash that like and subscribe button. Until next time, live your beliefs and stay tuned to Bliffy.